All right, class, this is pre-algebra lesson 1.6 exponents. This is the one you should be watching in September of 2015. You should have taken your test uh, today in class. Hopefully you did quite well. And now we're ready to finish off the rest of the chapter. All right, so this is going to be the rest of chapter one. And I hope you'll do as well in the second half of the chapter as you did in the first half. All right, hopefully you're ready to go. Maybe some of you have your pajamas on and you're watching in your pajamas or maybe in your big easy chair. But hey, uh, in all seriousness, don't forget, have your notes with you and write your notes as you watch. Remember, you can pause the video anytime you want. You can rewind and uh, hopefully that'll help you to understand the material. All right, here we go. So this is lesson 1.6 and it's exponents. Lesson 1.6 exponents. Now, some terminology. I think you guys all know that the A here is called the exponent. The A is called the exponent. E-X-P-O-N-E-N-T. You'll always recognize the exponent because it's above and to the right. Above and to the right. Now, do you know what the number or variable is called that is below and to the left? In other words, the part that the exponent belongs to. Well, make sure you know this term. It's called the base. The base. You have a base, the x, and its exponent, a. Now, normally, we're going to be dealing with numbers, but a variable takes care of all the possibilities. So you've got x to the a power, and that's how you uh, say it. x to the a power. x is the base, and a is the exponent. Now, what does an exponent do? An exponent indicates how many times to multiply the base times itself. The exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base times itself. Let's look at these couple examples we have. So if you look at the first example, we have a 3 exponent. And that tells you to multiply the base 5 times itself 3 times. 1, 5 a second five, and a third five. Five to the third power, or five cubed, we say cubed for the third power, is the base five times itself three times. Second example is y to the fourth power. So what would that be? That would be y times itself four times. Y times itself four times. So, <coughs> excuse me, a y to the fourth power is exactly the same as y times y times y times y. And the answer is because. All right, here we go. B, if no exponent is shown, then the exponent is 1. You got to keep that in mind. We don't show 1 exponents. But they are there, and they are a 1. And I'll remind you of that later on, because that will become important as we apply some of the exponent properties. All right, so if no exponent is shown, then the exponent is 1. C, when the base is negative, when the base is negative, so here let me reveal the example there, you can see that we have an exponent of 6, and the base is a negative 2, and we know it's negative 2 because of that parentheses. We have an exponent next to a parentheses, and inside that parentheses is going to be the base, and it's a negative 2. So when the base is negative, a parenthesis is used to indicate it. When the base is negative, a parenthesis is used to indicate it. Because without it, you'll have different values. Now, it matters whether or not the exponent is positive, or I'm sorry, is even or odd. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let me show you what we have here. Really, what we have is a negative 2. That's 1 times a negative 2. That's 2 times a negative 2. That's 3 times a negative 2. That's 4 times a negative 2. That's 5 times a negative 2. That's 6, right? Negative 2 times itself. How many times? 6 times. Why 6? Because the exponent was 6. So you should be writing negative 2, parentheses, 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 negative 2, right? Negative 2 times itself six times. Well, a couple things happen 
when you have a negative base and an even exponent. We talked about this um, back when we were multiplying positive and negative numbers. We talked about the same thing. If you have a negative base and an even exponent, that means you're going to multiply a negative times a negative an even amount of times. Therefore, your product will always be positive. Always. Right? If you're multiplying a negative times a negative eight times, you end up at positive, right? An even amount of times. And so really, a negative x to the eighth is exactly the same as x to the eighth. Why? Because it's going to end up being positive. Negative n to the 14th is the same as n to the 14th. Why? Because a negative times a negative 14 times is back to a positive. Right? And that's the reality. That's how it works. Now, what about when you have a negative base and you have an odd exponent? Now, again, odd. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Right? Any odd numbered exponent. In our two examples, we have a 9. That's odd. And we have a 3, that's odd. We have two odd-numbered exponents. So what ends up happening in this case? Well, remember, a negative times a negative times a negative, an odd amount of times, ends up being a negative. Right? If you look at, uh, look to the right here. Look at this example right here. So really what's here, if I wrote it out, would be a negative 7 times a negative 7 times a negative 7, right? So watch what happens. A negative times a negative is a positive. You'd have what? Positive 49 times a negative 7. And what's a positive times a negative? It's a negative. And this thing's going to end up being negative 343. Well, that's what's going on. But what we're dealing with right now is we can rewrite this. Negative 7 cubed is exactly the same as negative. Use that, do that in red, and I'm going to take my green for the base, and then I'm going to take my red for the exponent as a negative 7 cubed. Those are exactly the same. All right? It's going, to neg it's going to end up being a negative 343. So let's go back to number 2 and fill in the blank. A negative base with an odd exponent results in a negative product. Again, I know that that might seem a little tricky to you guys, but it's really not that bad. So again, look at number one, a negative base with an even exponent, positive, even positive, odd exponent, negative. That's not too hard to remember. Even exponent, positive, odd exponent is negative, okay? All right, let's uh, continue on. Let's take a look at a few other things here. All right, number two, write in exponent form. Okay, exponent form is simplistic. It means you want to use it as a base with an exponent. So we have 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. What is the base? 7. And how many times is the base multiplied times itself? One, two, three, four, five, six, six times. What's your exponent? Six. Now, by the way, be careful the way you write this. Don't write this in your notes, but this is the way I'll see some students do it. So watch, look right here. This is where I'm going to put the wrong thing. Don't put it in your notes because it's wrong. Don't do this. That's 76, okay? That's not 7 to the 6th power. That's 76, so you don't want to do that. Remember, exponents are smaller, and they're above and to the right. So 7 to the 6th power. 7 to the 6th power. All right, B is to the right there. So we have a negative 3 times a negative 3 times a negative 3 times a negative 3, right? Now, there's two ways you can write this. You can write the base, a negative 3. And you can take your exponent and write it to the fourth power. Or you can say to yourself, Mr. Scarfy, or to me, Mr. Scarfy, I thought when we had a negative base and an even exponent, it ends up being 
positive. So can I just write 3 to the 4th power? And the answer is yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right? Either way is acceptable. To the, you know, this, this one is probably the best answer because it's more simplified. All right, so look at C. Again, what is our base? It is a negative N. How many times is the negative N multiplied times itself? One, two, three, four, five. What's our exponent? Five. And now again, think about a negative base with an odd exponent. Negative base with an odd exponent. What can we do with that? We really don't need the parentheses, so we could really write it just like that. So again, this one could be written either way. Okay? Because we know we're going to end up with a negative product. A negative product. Okay, I know it's a little tricky, but after a while you'll catch on and it'll seem pretty normal. The basic idea is, look, this, simply this. To write in exponent form, write the base. And however many times it's multiplied times itself, that's the exponent. All right? Let's go to number three. Write in expanded form. Now we're going back the other way. You have the problem in exponent form. We want to write it in expanded form. So you're simply going to do 11 times itself. How many times? And hopefully you're thinking 5, right? So 11 times 11 times 11 times 11 times 11, right? 11 times itself 5 times. We've expanded that. 11 times itself 5 times. Now, B, we have a negative A times itself five times. So how does that usually go? Usually you just write the negative A. And base is green, so I'm using green. And now I need a parentheses. There's the first one. There's a negative A second. There's a negative A third. And there's a negative A fourth. Now again, because you have a negative base... And an even exponent, the product's going to be what? Positive or negative? Positive. So some would write it this way. A times A times A times A because you know it's going to end up positive. Now I know that's a little tricky. I know that is. But either way is acceptable and I'd take it either way. But if you can start thinking this way, you'll be in good shape, and that'll help you with some other things down the road. All right, so C, same kind of idea. The negative 5 times itself three times, negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, right? But again, one more time, what happens if you have a negative base and an odd exponent? The product is what, positive or negative? negative, and you could just write negative 5 times 5 times 5. Won't that give you a negative product? It will. So it's just really a shortcut way to write it. I'll take it either way, but again, if you'll think about positives and negatives, that's going to help you in the long run. All right, let's do some simplification. So we got some simplification problems here. So let's look at A, and A is 4 cubed, right? So what you want to do first is simply expand it. 4 times 4 times 4. Makes sense, right? We just expanded it. And look, how do you do any multiplication problem where you have more than two numbers? Well, multiply two of them together first. And remember, guys, I'm trying to get you guys used to doing your work below. So what we're going to do first is this 4 times 4. What is it? A 16. I still have a raised dot and I have that 4. Now that I'm down to two numbers, I can write what it equals. Do you know what a 4 times a 16 is? All right. Well, hopefully you know that that's a 64. I'll circle my answer. All right. We simplified 4 cubed. B's pretty easy, right? B's pretty easy. What's a 5 squared? A lot of you know that in your head. At this point, and that's good, you should. You should know something like that in your head. But again, we're going to expand it 5 times 5. 
And in this situation, because we just have two numbers, we can write what it equals, and that's 25, right? 5 times 5 is 25. Let's keep rolling. Look at C. All right, C is a little different. So here's what I'm thinking again. I got this going on. I got the negative base, and I've got a odd exponent. Negative base, odd exponent. That this can be written a couple different ways, and so it's written this way. But the easiest way to deal with it is we simply have a negative 5 times a 5 times a 5. Okay? By the way, we know our product is going to be negative, don't we? Because, again, we have a negative base, quote-unquote, and an odd exponent. Negative 5 times 5, negative 25. See how the work looks like the one above it? Two at a time. And now what's a negative times a positive? It's a negative. And 25 times 5 is 125. And our answer is negative 125. Okay? If you look at D, D is negative 5 to the 4th power. Negative 5 to the 4th power. So in this one, we could think about a negative, I'm sorry, yes, a negative base, right? Negative base, even exponent. What's the product going to be, positive or negative? You should be thinking positive. If you're not sure, then just write out what you have. So let's say you're not sure. All right, let's just write out what we have. Negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Agreed? Okay. Let's multiply these two together. What's a negative 5 times a negative 5? And hopefully you say 25. Let's also then multiply these together. What's negative 5 times negative 5? 25. And what are the two doing in between here? This is still multiplication, right? So this is going to be a big number. 25 times 25, and you'd have to figure out what in the world that is. But 25 times 25, I believe, is 625. 25 times 25, 625. Okay? Let's get into some more interesting problems here. I need to get rid of my shade so I can put this higher. Look at E. Look at E. All right, so E is really two things. First, I have a 3 times a 3 times a 3. 3 times itself, 3 times. Do you agree? Right? For the 3 cubed, right? For this 3 cubed, we have a 3 times 3 times 3. Make sense? Okay. I'm going to take my black, and I'm going to put that negative sign, right, from right there. It doesn't go with the exponent. If it did, it would be in a parentheses, and it's not. So it's just going to sit there. And now, let's do the 2 to the 4th. So what's a 2 to the 4th? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Do you agree? Hope you do. All right, so let's now multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, and we have a 9 times 3 in the front. Let's finish the front. 9 times 3 is 27. I'm going to take my black. I'm going to keep this negative sign going here in between. Let's deal with our twos now. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Right? And what's 4 times 4? 16. And now we're ready to just finish off the problem, right? 27 minus 16, and hopefully we all still remember that that's 11, right? <laughs> I hope. I hope, I hope. Okay. That's E. That's E. Why don't you try F? Go ahead and pause the video and try F. I'm going to keep right on going, so if you don't pause the video, you're just going to hear me. If you want to try it, pause the video and give it a try. All right, so here's F, right? I have a negative, then a 5 times itself three times. One, two, three. And again, notice I'm going to have a negative product like I'm supposed to. I've got that black plus sign. And now I have a negative 3 times a negative 3. Okay. 
negative 5 times 5 is a negative 25, right? Got my plus sign. And let me deal with a negative 3 times a negative 3, right? That's a 9. All right, negative 25 times 5 is negative 125. And I still have plus 9. All right, so what do you see when you look at this? I hope you see one negative number. We have 125 negatives, and we have nine positives. Remember, nine of these positives are going to wipe out nine of the 125 negatives. So let's count up how many negatives are left. Well, what is it from nine up to 125? It's 116, and what are left? Negatives, so it's negative 116. Did you get it right? Big numbers, I know, but you can do it. All right, let's look at G. Again, if you're feeling confident, you want to try it yourself, go ahead and pause the video. If not, here comes the explanation. All right, so the top, we got a 4 cubed. 4 times 4 times 4. Agreed? I take my black division symbol, right? So right now we're at 4 times 4 times 4 division symbol. All right, black parentheses. 6 times 6, right? Black negative, right? The negative. And what do we have? Two, two, fifth power, right? Two times two times two times two times two. That's a lot of twos. Close the parentheses. Make sense? Okay. Let's take a look in the front. Four times four is 16. And we did this problem earlier. What's 16 times four? 64, right? Okay. The front number is 64. Again, we would have this division symbol coming down each time, right? See how doing your work below keeps everything in order? Keeps everything in the right place, keeps everything in order. Okay, let's keep working. 6 times 6 is 36. Now you have to start working your 2s. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And you still have that times that other 2, right? So that's the next line. Still got that negative in between, and I got my closing. So again, 4 times 4 is 16, and now we have 16 times 2, right? So now this line would have been 36. And let's just save time here. 16 times 2 is 32. We still have the negative between, and we close the parentheses. All right, kind of did two steps in one right here. That became that, right? Okay, we're almost there. Hang in there. We got a 64. We got a division symbol. We all know that 36 minus 32 is 4. And the final thing is going to be 64 divided by 4. Do you know what that equals? Hit equals 16, and there we are at 16. All right, that's a tricky problem, I know. But sometimes you'll get them like that. And uh, just take it a little piece at a time. Don't let it scare you. Just take it a little piece at a time. All right, number four. We got to get to some properties of exponents. I'm going to cover a couple of them today, and we're going to cover the other couple of them on Thursday. I'm going to break them up because these are really important, and you use them all the time in algebra, and these rules are going to be on every test the rest of the year. So you want to learn them now and learn them well, and they'll serve you well. So these are properties of exponents. Properties of exponents. The first one is called the multiplication property of exponents. Now here's the key. It's for multiplying like bases. How do you use it? For multiplying like bases. And the rule's pretty simple. x to the a times x to the b equals x, the common base, just once. Take the first exponent, a. I'm going to take my green, do a plus sign, and take the second exponent, b. x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. Meaning, the property is a shortcut to figuring out what you get when you multiply like bases. All right, let me see if I can get you to understand how this works. So let's use the example. 
5 cubed times 5 to the fourth. If I were to use the rule, I would end up with 5. I have the front exponent 3 plus the back exponent 4. And by the way, this right here is called the rule step. And I always want you to show the rule step. Because every time you write it, it helps your brain to remember it. So I always want you to show the rule step because I want your brain to remember it. So now we can finish up with the final answer, 5 to the 7th power. Do you agree? 5 to the 7th. If we use the rule, we get 5 to the 7th. Now, let me show you what the rule does. The rule is a time saver. So underneath, I'm going to do it the long way. What is a 5 cubed? 5 times 5 times 5. Do you agree that this 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5? I hope you do. Let's now take the 5 to the 4th, right? Because now we got to multiply it. There's my blue raised dot, right? And now we got to multiply it times 5, five 4 times, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. So now look what we've got. Look at what this is. What's the base? The base is a 5. And what's the exponent going to be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 5 to the 7 power. Look at that. It worked. Didn't the rule give us the same answer? It did. And of course it's going to as long as we do it properly. So what does the rule do? What does the property do? It saves you time. It saves you from writing out all those fives and counting them up. It's exactly what's going on. Not a hard rule to deal with. All right, so let's see if we can apply this rule. So here's a situation where you don't have numbers. You have variables, an n for a base. Hey, it's not hard. n to the fifth times n cubed is n to the five plus three n to the 5 plus 3, right? And now we can simplify our answer, and what do we get? n to the 8th power, right? Again, don't forget, I want to see that rule step. Show the rule step. Show the rule step. All right, so what do we got here? What's the base? A negative x, and I need that parentheses. What are my exponents? A 5 plus the 3. And, oh, we don't know what to do with three things, do we? I mean, math's impossible. Nobody could know what to do. We've done examples with two. There's three of them. What in the world would I do next? Do you have any idea? Hey, math makes sense, right? If we did 5 plus 3, what are you going to do with the 4? Oh, plus 4, right? 5 plus 3 plus 4. So what's our final answer going to be? Negative x to 5 and 3 is 8, and 8 and 4 is 12. Oh, you know what? I can actually simplify this one more time. All right, so we got to go back to what is it, what will the product be if you have a negative base and an even exponent? The product will be positive, so we no longer need that negative in the parentheses. Final answer, x to the 12th. That's awesome. Now, again, if you can get this far, that will be great. To go that final step is really if you understand, and uh, that's the way it works. All right, I got one more property today, and it's the power property of exponents. So it's a base and its exponent to an exponent. A base and its exponent to an exponent. So if you look here at the example, at the property here, here's a base and its exponent, and you got that parentheses, and you got another exponent. So a base and its exponent to an exponent. The rule's not hard. The rule is the base. And this time, instead of adding exponents, you multiply them. So x to the ab power. And remember, writing two letters together is multiplication. If you want to put a raised dot in between, you can do that. But x to the a to the b equals x to the a times b. 
x to the a to the b equals x to the a times b. So let me once again try to help you to understand how this rule works. Using the rule is very easy. So first off on 1, let's use the rule. 3 the base. The base is exponent times the whole outside exponent, right? 3 to the 2 times 4. And we all know 2 times 4 is 8. Final answer, 3 to the 8th, right? Okay. What is the rule doing? The rule is saving you time. What is to the 4th power? A 3 squared. So how would we write 3 squared to the 4th power? Long, the long way. Do 3 squared, 1, times 3 squared, 2, times 3 squared, 3, times 3 squared, 4, right? And what is 3 squared? What's each 3 squared? Each 3 squared is a 3 times 3. And this one is a 3 times 3. And this one is a 3 times 3. And this one is a 3 times 3. That takes a long time. So where do we end up with? 3 times itself how many times? Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Look at that. 3 to the 8th power. What is the property? It's a time saver. Now, as long as you apply it properly, it's going to save you a lot of time. So a couple quick examples. It's not hard. It's the base. The base is exponent 3 times the outside exponent 2. Y to the 3 times 2. We want to finish simplifying, and we all know 3 times 2 is 6. Y to the 6th. It's pretty easy. In example B, the base is 11. So the base, take its exponent 5 times the outside exponent 7. And this handy rule saves us a lot of time. 11 to the 35th power. That will be a big number. That would be a big number. All right. I've covered a lot and I've taken a lot of time. So let me real briefly go back very, very quickly and review. All right. Don't forget, you've got the exponent and its base. And the exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base times itself, right? How many times to multiply the base times itself. And we did that. We did that. All right. I don't know how I got back there, but anyhow, here we go. Then we talked about this. Negative base, even exponent. What's the product? Positive. Negative base, odd exponent. What's the product? Negative. Again, I know that's a little tricky, but you guys can get it. What else do we talk about? Writing in exponent form. Pretty simplistic. We did some examples there. What do we do next? We wrote in expanded form. What is expanded form? Write the whole thing out. Write it out. We did some examples there. Then we did some simplification, some compound problems, right? First few were pretty simplistic. Then we got into stuff like this and like that and like that. Now, again, you won't get many of those, but one here or there to get the idea down. And... Uh, compound problems. Just take them a piece at a time. How do we end up with the two properties? So look at the first property. Focus right here. Look at how the bases are the same. What do you do? You take the base and you add the exponents. x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. What was our second property? You have an base and its exponent to another exponent. How do you do that? It's the base and you multiply the exponents. And I say it this way, x to the a time, x to the a to the b, excuse me, x to the a to the b equals x to the a times b. And that's that rule. All right, you do not have to do your homework tonight. Remember, because we're flipped, you took notes tonight at home. You'll be working this homework in class tomorrow, and I'll help you out. So see you in class tomorrow. Hope you have a great rest of the night. All right, bye.